Yeah, can, can you tell? Can you? Can we know anything about other figures of Christianity? Uh, did the disciples exist? Uh, you know, Peter, John, uh, James, etc. Uh, you know, and how did their travels of their uh, tra how did the travels of their deaths get recorded? Because Christian fundamentalists like uh, William Lane Craig, Michael Kona, and, uh, and other uh, uh, Christian fundamentalists would say that you know the, the disciples died. For their belief in the resurrection, uh, and uh, you know, people like Barterman and Richard Carrier have already responded to this argument. But Bob, what, what are your thoughts on uh, you know the, the, the claim of the disciples and you know uh, their their history and stuff? Mm. We know nothing about the, the supposed twelve disciples. The Bible doesn't even tell us hardly a thing. Uh, with uh, James, the uh, the son of Zebedee, he we're told in Acts that he was beheaded uh, and yet there's a con, uh, conflicting tradition in Papias that uh, that it was not only um, James but his brother John uh, they were both killed at the same time whereas other Christians say oh no John lived to be a uh, hundred years old and we we hear absolutely nothing about uh, the others with the seeming exception of Peter but Peter appears to be a kind of Dr. Watson figure uh, in Sherlock Holmes you know he does this masterful deduction of who the, the villain is and what happened and uh, the so so uh, Arthur Conan Doyle has to explain to the reader uh, how Holmes did this. So he has the, Holmes' sidekick, Doctor Watson, ask for clarification. I say, Holmes, how did you deduce that little Sally was the Shropshire Slasher? And then Holmes is elementary, my dear Watson, and he explains the whole thing for the benefit of the reader. Uh, in Buddhist stories, you have. Uh, uh, Ananda, the uh, disciple of the Buddha who's a bit uh, thick uh, headed and uh, he will bring up some good idea he thinks only to have the Buddha say uh, no, no, uh, that's not going to work uh, this is uh, the way we're going to do it. Peter is always th the same sort of character. Uh, gee Lord, uh, how many times must I forgive my brother? What, a uh, big seven times? No, uh, no uh, 70 times 7 a again and again uh, Peter comes up looking like an idiot because he's supposed to he's giving Jesus he's the straight man uh, he poses a question for Jesus to answer for the benefit of the reader uh, gee Lord now what did you mean by that parable uh, is it what you don't get this parable how you can understand any of my parables okay here we go the, the sower is the son of man and so uh, he's just just a, 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 a he's like a footnote uh, it's like okay reader we know you're wondering about this here's Peter's uh, he's asking your question and uh, the uh, which is one big reason Peter looks like such a moron uh, and uh, it's not the poor guy's fault he's just a fictional prop now there, there might have been such a person but uh, the, the Gospels can't even quite agree on the names of the twelve uh, and uh, some of them sound suspiciously like the the desposunoi the uh, the heirs of Jesus so-called James the just Simon bar Cleophas um, and and so on uh, Judas Thomas and um, so forth Robert Eisenman has come up with what I think is a convincing theory that the original or the earlier group of authorities were the, the so-called brethren of Jesus uh, and that uh, they got um, fictively divided up several of the twelve kind of reduced some of them have the same name even a couple of Simons a couple of Jameses and so on uh, they they are expanded uh, multiplied versions of, of the uh, original uh, pillars as they're called uh, uh, Cephas uh, James and John but we know nothing about these people and um, even the idea that they're the brethren of Jesus as Karen and Wells and many others say that is not uh, necessarily 
a, a statement about biological descent uh, and uh, it's there are many options as to what that might be and the path the single passage where James is called the brother of the Lord uh, there's a good argument that that's an interpolation anyway so uh, we really know nothing about them. Now, one weird parallel that might be relevant, Madame Blavatsky, the founder of the Theosophical Society, she claimed to be in touch with the ascended masters, these immortal adepts who lived in the mountains of Tibet. Uh, they've transcended mortality, and she had all sorts of fancy names for them, uh, Kuthumi, Moria El, etc., 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 a bunch of them. Um, research has shown that, uh, and she, oh boy, what a character she was. Uh, she would claim to have revelations from these guys that would f flutter down from a vent in the ceiling. Uh, and she's, oh, here's another revelation. Well, uh, that was hokum, but somebody uh, researched and found out that these guys did actually exist. They were just friends of hers. She just made them into these, uh, gave them these funny names and uh, said that they were immortals in Tibet and so forth. So there was a historical basis, but it, it was totally uh, contrived. In the same way, it's possible that behind the uh, fictive apostles, uh, there were uh, church um, leaders of the second century who uh, uh, tried to associate themselves. As for, for Paul, uh, I think that uh, Hermann Dettering and various others are right that Paul is the same guy also known as Simon Magus, Simon the Sorcerer, uh, because uh, when he is described in the, uh, the Kerygmata Petru, the preachings of Peter, and even in uh, the book of Acts, it's pretty obvious we're talking about Paul under another name. The law is over and uh, salvation is by grace, not by works of the law and so on. Uh, and Peter confronts him much as in uh, the book of Galatians when they tangle at, uh, at Antioch. And uh, I think, yeah, that, that's right that, uh, that uh, he was known as Paul in some circles and Simon Magus and others. So yeah, I think, and, and Simon is mentioned by Josephus as a kind of Rasputin figure connected to the uh, uh, the Herodians and so forth. And so yeah, I think there was a historical Paul, just that he's, he's Simon Magus. Oh, okay, so we don't have any reliable records about them believing the resurrection and then dying. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, the... the uh, the only reason anybody even thought the the twelve were martyred, because Richard Carey said there's nothing in the New Testament that says they died for their belief. That's right. And when you look at the books that say they were, these are wildly unhistorical, fanciful legends, uh, where Andrew and Matthias go preach to the cannibals, and uh, Paul is executed by Nero, but then immediately rises from the dead and threatens Nero. You're next, uh, and just all kinds of crazy, uh, fabulous stuff that uh, that is much wilder than anything in the New Testament. You're going to take this as history, uh, and even if we knew they were martyred, and we don't know that, uh, you'd have to ask if they, uh, if the Roman inquisitors were in the habit of uh, giving you a chance to recant. We don't know that. I mean, uh, from what we read uh, in in the sources we have, I said, uh, I hear you're a Christian, come with me. Uh, we don't know that they uh, they were like, you know, give my thumb screws now. You renounce that Jesus guy, right? No, I'm not going to do it. Ouch! There's, <laughs> there's no reason to think this happened. Uh, and so they, uh, it's just amazing to me uh, what apologists will resort to. Oh, okay. Uh, that brings me to the church fathers.